Let's now combine it because, of course, when you're doing a question and you know it's a permutation or you know it's a combination, that makes it a little bit easier than just having a question and you have to decide what it is. So let's have a look at some probability questions that have appeared over the past few years um, in the HSC. So this one, Mr. and Mrs. Roberts, their four children are going to a theatre. They're randomly allocated six seats next to each other in a single row. What's the probability that the four children are allocated seats next to each other? So are we talking permutation or combination? Yeah, it could be a permutation. So, probability that the children will sit next to each other. So, on the bottom of the fraction, we've got the number of ways of arranging the six people. Uh, no restrictions, so that's obviously six factorial. Top of the fraction, I now have three objects, because the four children we're going to say is one group. And we can arrange them four factorial ways. And then we have to arrange them... Uh, two adults and one group of children. So now three objects, because there's nothing that says those four seats have to be in the middle of the two adults. So of course there's still three factorial ways we could arrange the, uh, the two adults and the children. And that tidies is up to be one in five. One in five, there we go. Now let's move on to look at some more interesting questions, because one of the things about extension 2, which you may or may not realise, one of the topics they have is harder extension 1. And one of the topics they love asking is permutations, combinations. So ha let's have a look at some of the extension 2 ones that have appeared. Okay, so this one comes from 2007, same as I think the last one was 2007, wasn't it? We've got 12 red marbles and 12 yellow marbles. And we're going to select 6 marbles at random without replacement. Calculate the probability that exactly three of the selected marbles are red. Okay. So exactly three are red. In this case, permocom. Yeah, so we're just selecting the marbles. We don't care the order we're pulling them out. So I'd do that as a combination as well. So bottom of the fraction, 24C6. So there's 24 marbles all up. I'm just going to select six. Top of the fraction, three of them are red. So from the 12 red ones, I want to select three, which then means there's 12 yellow ones left, and I'm going to select three from there as well. So we get 0.36. Now that in itself is not a particularly difficult combination question, but we're going to need this answer for the next bit. Hence or otherwise, calculate the probability that more than three of the selected marbles are red. Well, we've just worked out the probability that exactly three of them are red. So greater than three would be probability of four being red, five being red, or six being red. If I did the complementary idea, then I'd have to work out zero, one, two, and also three, which I've already got, so that would be four things. So we actually would be doing more work if I went the complementary idea this time. So probability of four, five, and six. So 4 would be 12C4, 12C2, then 5 would be 12C5, 12C1, and 6, 12C6, 12C0, giving us to two decimal places 0.32. Here's another way of doing it, by the way, because notice the question said, hence or otherwise. The way I just did it was otherwise. I didn't actually use part I. This is where the clever bit comes in. If you notice it, it's quicker. Well, I could say the probability of greater than three red, and I am going to use the complementary idea, but not in the way I originally suggested. I'm going to take away the probability of three red, but also the probability of less than three red. Now, I know it sounds like I said that before, because I said let's work out zero, one, or two. But, you see, the probability of less than 3 red would be the same as the probability of greater than 3 yellow. And because there's the same number of yellow balls and red balls, then the probability of greater than 3 yellow would be the same as the probability of greater than 3 red. So I could now look at this like an equation 
move it to the other side and say, well, two lots of the probability of greater than three red is one minus the probability of three red, which is what I worked out in part A. So this is the hence part. Let's use what we did. Divide by two, and we get the, well, obviously the same answer of 0.32. Okay, so that was quite, a, I think, a, a clever way of doing it. The, I guess the clue was when they said hence. There must have been a way of using that first part to get the answer. All right, 2006 one. This was quite a good question, I thought. In a chess match between the home team and the away team, games played on four different boards, which we conveniently call board one, two, three, and four. On each board, the probability the home team wins is 0.2, a draw is 0.6, and the home team loses, or in other words, the away team wins, is 0.2. So they're equally likely to win. The results are recorded by listing the outcomes of the games for the home team in board order. So the example they've given is, if we win on board, well, that should be board one, shouldn't it? Win on board one, draw on board two, lose on board three, draw on board four, then it would look like WDLD, win, draw, loss, draw. How many different recordings are possible? Well, number of recordings, so there are three results that could go on the first board, three results on the second board, three results on the third board, three results on the fourth board. So this is just a basic counting idea. Three to the power of four, which is there are 81 different outcomes. Calculate the probability of the result, which is recorded as win, draw, loss, draw. Okay. So the specific one of win, draw, loss, draw. Well, win on board one was 0.2. Draw on board two, 0.6. Loss on board three, 0.2. And draw on the last board, 0.6. So 0.144. Okay. Now they make it interesting. A team score one point for each game won, half a point for a draw, and zero for a loss. What's the probability that the home team scores more points than the away team? The home team scores more points than the away team. Well, I'm going to work out, first of all, probability that they have the same number of points. So same number of points, it could be four draws. So that would be 0 0.6 to the power of four, 0 0.1296. That would be one way you could get the same score. You could also get two wins and two losses. That would give both teams the same number of points. So 0 0.2 squared, 0 0.2 squared, but notice I've multiplied it by 4 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial. Because it's now sort of similar to saying, how many words could you arrange from the letters W, W, L, L? So I mean, we could arrange those wins and losses on any of the boards. So 4 factorial over 2 factorial, 2 factorial. Each one of those has the probability of 0.2 squared times 0.2 squared. So the overall probability, 0.0096. Uh, what other possibilities? We've got four draws, two wins, two losses. What else could we have? We could have two draws, a win and a loss. Is that what I've done next? Oh. Yes, two draws, a win and a loss. So if I have two draws, a win and a loss, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, the two draws will be 0 0.6 squared. But again, there are different ways that this could happen. So W, L and two Ds. So four factorial divided by two factorial. 0.1728. And I think that's it. I don't think there's any other way they could get equal points. Okay. So the probability of them getting equal points is 0.312. That isn't, of course, the question they've asked me. They've asked me the probability the home team scores more points than the away team. So if the probability they score equal points is 0.312, then the probability they score unequal points, or different points, would be 1 minus 0.312. So 0.688. But remember we said Team A winning is equally likely as Team B winning. 
So if all these results where the two teams have unequal points, half of them would be Team A winning, half of them would be Team B winning. So therefore, half of 0.688, there's my probability of 0.344. Let's have a look at this one. 2002 paper. So we've got nine cards marked one to nine. Three cards drawn at random, and we're going to place them on a table from left to right. I guess creating a three-digit number, if you like. What's the probability that that number that we put down exceeds 400? So it's greater than 400. Um, greater than 400 would simply be 6 over 9, because all I've said to myself here is, well, what is the condition that would make the three-digit number greater than 400? And it simply would be that the first number is 4 or more. Well, what's the probability that the first number is four or more? Six out of nine. The other two numbers are irrelevant, really. Of course, you could have still done it using the basic counting idea. You could have said, all right, well, there's nine possibilities for the first card, then eight possibilities for the second card, seven possibilities for the third card. So the bottom of the fraction, nine times eight times seven. But on the top, what would have happened is you said, well, six possibilities for the first card, but now I could have any card I like. So there's eight possibilities for the second card. Seven possibilities. The eight and the seven cancel with the eight and seven on the bottom and you get six on nine. So two-thirds of a chance. What's the probability that the three digits are drawn in descending order? Descending order. Well, we know the total arrangements of three digits is three factorial. So that's six different arrangements. Probability that they're in descending order. Well, there's only going to be one arrangement of those six cards that are in descending order. So therefore, one in six. Okay. Three cards, you're going to pull out three cards regardless. There's only one way you can put them down that are going to be in descending order. So one out of the total number of possibilities, six. Oh, no, they don't have to be above 400, no.